Let's move on to learning objective three, how to apply cost and recognition principles to property, plant and equipment, which is one of the categories of long lived assets. We'll be covering the other categories in separate videos. First, this learning objective needs to be flipped around. It should be apply recognition and cost principles to PP and E, which is short for property, plant and equipment. We'll be covering the concept of recognition first. Then this learning objective needs to be subdivided into subcategories, starting with recognition or when should PP and E be capitalized. We'll then cover component accounting called componentization. Next, what to do about subsequent costs, costs which are incurred after the PP and E has been placed into use. This is often called post acquisition costs, post meaning after. We'll then cover cost elements, what must be included in the cost of PP&E. How to account for borrowing costs when we borrow to purchase PP&E. Followed by how to account for assets which are self-constructed, meaning they're constructed by the entity for their own use. We'll then cover deferred payment terms, how to account for the cost of PP&E when we pay for it over a period of years at interest rates which are lower than the market rate or zero interest rate loans. We'll then cover site restoration costs, which is when a location must be restored to its original condition at the end of its useful life. This is also known as decommissioning liabilities. This will be followed by non-monetary exchanges, which is when assets of one entity are exchanged for the assets of another entity followed by how to cost assets which are donated to the entity. And then finally, how to account for assets which are purchased with government assistance. As you can see, we have a lot to cover in this one learning objective. So let's get started with when assets should be recognized, which is all about capitalization. Property, plant and equipment, PP&E for short, includes long-term resources such as office, factory, warehouse buildings, um, investment properties, equipment such as machinery, furniture, tools, and mineral resource properties. PP&E is also referred to as a tangible capital asset or a capital asset, plant assets, or fixed assets. Under both IFRS and ASPE, Accounting Standard for Private Enterprises, PP&E are assets which have the following characteristics. One, PP&E are assets which are held for use in the production of goods or services, are rented to other entities or for administrative purposes. PP&E are not intended to be sold in the ordinary operation of a business. Why does PP&E include long-lived assets which are for rent to other entities when we know that there is a separate category of assets called investment property? We defined investment property in another video as land or buildings which generate revenue through rental income by renting the asset to someone else. So why are these assets included in both the investment property category and in the PP&E category for rental to others? That's because investment property can be valued using either the cost method, which is defined under IAS 16 property plant and equipment, hence its inclusion in the PP&E category, or it can be valued at fair value under IAS 40 investment property, in which case it has to be included in a separate category called investment property. Therefore, it's important when we look at the characteristic of PP&E, including the words rental to others, it means that those items are being valued using the cost model. Moving on to characteristic two, PP&E are assets which are used over the long term, meaning more than one accounting period, more than one fiscal year. They're also depreciated, meaning that the cost of the investment in the PP&E, except for land, is charged to the periods that benefit from their use. Finally, three, PP&E are assets which are tangible, have physical existence. They're often called touch assets for that reason. These assets can be physically touched, like a, a chair or a computer. Now that we know what are the characteristics of PP&E, 
when do entities recognize and report them? Costs incurred for PP&E are capitalized, meaning that they are added to an asset account instead of being expensed if they meet two recognition criteria. First, the item must have future economic benefit, meaning that it will benefit the entity in some way, shape or form in the future and that the benefit will flow to the entity that purchased it. And important to note that this says and not or and so both criteria must be met. The cost of the item can be measured reliably. If both criteria are met, then the costs must be capitalized, meaning it's debited to an asset account and included in the assets cost included in the property plant and equipment. These recognition principles apply to costs incurred when the asset is first purchased, but also apply when we're incurring costs to upgrade, replace, or service the asset. These recognition criteria are both under IFRS, IAS 16, paragraph 7, and ASPE, section 1000, paragraph 39. Now, what if costs are incurred, but they don't meet one or both of the criteria? In that case, the costs are recognized as an expense. Examples would be repair costs and the cost of ongoing maintenance. For instance, oil changes to a fleet of company cars. This would be ongoing maintenance and therefore expensed as incurred. Any costs which are ongoing, meaning they are repetitive over the life of the asset, are expensed. So, the standards clearly indicate that an item of property, plant and equipment must be tangible, last for more than one accounting period, be depreciated and be used to generate revenue for the entity and it can be recognized when the benefits will flow to the entity and the cost is measurable. That seems fairly straightforward. Now, let's get down to a few specifics. What about spare parts? Should they be capitalized as PP&E or as supplies, sometimes called supply inventory? For example, if a manufacturer has equipment and they have spare parts, such as a replacement motor oil and grease, and replacement fuses, for instance, would they be classified as PP&E or classified as supplies? If the spare parts have multiple uses, such as the oil and grease can be used for different machinery, are regularly used, such as the fuses, and are replaced within one accounting period, one fiscal year, then they must be reported as supplies. If it is a major spare part, which is associated with only one item of PP&E, plus it lasts more than one accounting period, such as a replacement motor, then it is capitalized as PP&E. In addition, consider a unique type of spare part called standby equipment. An example would be a transformer for a utility company. These are held as backup for major equipment, which is in use and they must be classified as PP&E. Then there's servicing equipment, which is equipment used to service other items of PP&E. These are also recognized as PP&E as long as they are used for a specific asset and are useful for more than one accounting period. Finally, there are items which are acquired for safety or environmental reasons, such as pollution reduction equipment or mandatory air emission testing equipment. Note that these costs do not directly increase the future economic benefit, nor is the benefit likely to flow to the entity. They don't meet the first criteria. However, these costs are recognized as part of PP&E because they are necessary for the entity to obtain the future economic benefit from all their other assets. Without the required safety equipment or environmental equipment, they would not be permitted to continue in business. And for that reason, any acquisitions for the purpose of safety and environmental reasons are capitalized as part of PP&E. So keep in mind that the standards clearly indicate that an item of property, plant and equipment must be tangible, last for more than one accounting period, be depreciated 
and be used to generate revenue for the entity. In addition, in order to be recognized on the financial statements, these assets must have benefits which flow to the entity and the cost must be measurable.